Amazing news, the car is finally back from the body shop. It's been a while, but oh my God, hasn't it been worth it? Apologies for the lack of the uploads on the Audi. It's just been a little bit tricky finding a body shop that wants to take on this project in our time frame. So the car is dirty, apologies, but I've already been out in it, I just couldn't resist. So let's take a look at the work that's been done. Whoa, 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 before you get to see the results of the body shop, let's just take a step back and look at a recap of the Audi S4 build. Deciding to start YouTube and going headfirst into purchasing our first Copart auction car was in the space of only a few weeks. Little did I know what was in store with the whole buying and collecting of crash damage cars. Lesson learned, trailer every time. Although it may not seem the biggest of projects, being my first, it was definitely daunting. However, the long winter nights, hours scrolling through the internet for parts, fitting those parts, searching and deciding on a wheel choice and nailing down and deciding on a body shop to use. How the car looks now, and driving it, it puts a massive smile on my face. And all of this has definitely been worth it. Creating this YouTube channel has opened my eyes up to other channels. The amount of time you have to put in to create these videos is crazy just to get this content out and to keep it exciting. It really isn't easy. So if you've enjoyed the Audi series so far, please drop us a like, comment and more importantly subscribe to this channel as it's only just beginning. So the door has been repaired and painted. The sill has been done and no longer protrudes into the door, along with the passenger side door. And the wing has now been painted as well, and the blend into the front bumper. One thing, do you think we should keep the wing badgeless, so a more cleaner look? Or does it look better with a badge? Let us know in the comments. So there's one niggling little job that I need to do, and it's inside. I thought by leaving it, the leather of the interior rear seats would fix itself. However, it's still there. And it seems that Google may have come up with the answer, fingers crossed. So let's give it a go now. A couple of little dimple marks to the leather. Possibly when this was folded down and trapping something underneath. We've had the car for about four months now and I was hoping with it just resting, it would sort itself out. So the two options we have are the hot air gun, and the good old fashioned water bottle. So I'm gonna leave the hot water bottle on the lower ones for now, and I'm gonna tackle the top two ones with the hot air gun. So that one didn't pay off at all. Cheers, Google. It got nice and warm, and I tried to like sort of stretch it away. Um, but they're still there and I don't want to get it too hot. And the hot water bottle has been on there for a good 10 minutes now. Yeah, that's done nothing. Are they any better or am I just imagining it? Has anyone else got any techniques for getting dimples and creases out of leather? Because I can't let it go looking like that. So I need to grab a few new uh, service parts. So I thought, why not take the ID for a little spin? be rude not to. So after getting a couple of quotes from some garages, I'm gonna do the majority of the work myself. However, the gearbox side of things, I'm gonna definitely lead to a specialist. The principle of changing the gear oil and the filter isn't rocket science. How I'm just not comfortable with monitoring the oil temperature um, in the gearbox to make sure I fill it correctly. And then the procedure of resetting the gearbox um, itself. I'm just gonna leave it to someone who's got the kit. So I ended up going with the Miller's oil, their performance one, along with the Bosch filter, Bosch plugs, and genuine diff oil and washers. 
along with a Denso cabin pollen filter. Here is the diff, this is the ATF side. Already sprayed some lubricant on the plugs just to give it a better chance of undoing. You can see they're pretty corroded. I don't think they've ever been undone. So there is the drain and then the fill is just up the top there. And this is the other side, there's the drain and then a fill plug. Another tip is to always crack off the fill one first before the drain one, because if you start draining and you can't undo the top one, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So at this point now, I should be filling the syringe properly. I'm still unaware that I'm filling it above the plunger until this very moment coming up now. You f dumped. There's nothing difficult about filling the diff up. Just fill until the fluid overflows, let it settle, and then you know your fluid level is correct. definitely needed replacing. Enjoy these mega clips coming up next. So that's it for today's video on the IDS4. As you've seen, it's now serviced, it's back together and it's looking amazing. It sounds amazing and drives amazing too. Next step will be for that gearbox to be done at a specialist and then we'll look to get it mapped. It's like the typical stage one, um, just a little bit more power, slight bit more torque as well. And then this thing will be ready for a massive road trip. So thank you very much for watching this episode. 
you could like, comment and subscribe, that'd be fabulous. See you in the next one.